Parsnip and apple soup with a parmesan chive foam. Fit for a princess. Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. Because my latest cookbook, Eating Royally, Recipes and Remembrances from a Palace Kitchen, is now back in print, you can order a, a copy of the book in the link in the description below. Along with The Royal Chef at Home, you can order that one too. I wanted to share with you one of my favorite recipes from the book. Parsnip and apple soup with a Parmesan chive foam. This dish was one of Princess Diana's favourites too and I made it for her all the time, especially at lunch and on, on cold winter's days. There's something about the, the velvety, smooth creaminess of the, the parsnips in the soup and then the tart, sharp apples in there as well. The combination together just makes it so comforting on cold days. Parsnips are the overlooked sister of the carrot family and in the olden days, in Victorian days, they actually used to bake them and put them in a pie because they're so sweet. I love parsnips and, you know, whether it's just having them uh, roasted with carrots and root vegetables in the oven or mashed into potatoes and just all blended together, the creaminess and smoothness of them is absolutely gorgeous. Even if you're having a steak, to have a steak and just some fried parsnip chips on top, they're so versatile. I take the parsnips and I've peeled them and now I'm going to just chop them into little bite-sized pieces. And then the onions. Again, just rough chopped because they're, they're going to be blended anyway. They need to be about the same size as the parsnips because we want them all to cook at the same time. And apple. I like to take the apple and I quarter it, take the core out, the center, and then just peel it. Chopped and that goes in. Same bite sized pieces as the onion and the parsnip. At Kensington Palace, Princess Diana used to come into the kitchen all the time for lunch. Whenever she was on her own, set up a tray just like the picture in the book and she'd just sit there and chat about anything and everything that was going on and it could be Darren have you got a new girlfriend yet or uh, hey have you seen Le Miserable I was there last night it's amazing have you seen Phantom of the Opera and then sometimes and you'd always have to be ready She'd say, Darren, you won't believe what the Queen just told me. And you had to be ready. I was like, oh, your Royal Highness, you shouldn't tell me this. Don't tell me this. I'm not supposed to know this stuff. <laughs> it was all harmless stuff, but... Now everything goes into the pot. Parsnips, my apple, the onion. And I've got some coriander. This really gives it a nice flavor. A little bit of pepper and some salt. Not too much, we can season it later. And then some good chicken broth. You can use vegetable broth if you want to. The great thing about this dish is it's gluten free. So if you've got friends coming over with celiacs and things, it's just you know, the perfect dish to serve for lunch. It's gonna go on the stove now. I'm going to just simmer it away until it's really nice and tender. And then I can add the other ingredients that sort of take it to the next level. It's been bubbling away now for about 15 to 20 minutes and everything is really nice and tender and it's already smelling amazing. Now, let's put it in the blender. Don't put too much in there because we don't want it blowing the lid off the top. You can do it in two batches. And now I can add some cream. That's what makes it really creamy, right? <laughs> if you want to, 
and you like it spicy, you can add some curry powder into this. The combination of the curry and the apple and the onion and the parsnip is just gorgeous. And just add the amount of flavor. And also, if you can't get apples, you can use pears and they make an incredible soup too. And you may need to add a little more water or chicken broth into this, depending on the consistency that you're looking for. And also how long you've actually been boiling it, because as you boil it, the liquid like evaporates. This for me is a little bit too thick. It's a great veluti. And I can imagine serving this with some lamb. Uh, it would just be amazing, but I want it as a soup. So I've got to do it a little bit thinner. So a little more chicken broth in there and then whisk that in. Taste it, check for salt and pepper. I love the creaminess of it. It's just, it's just so comforting. I think there's enough salt in there and I do think there's enough pepper. I like black pepper in there. I like to be able to see those little flakes in there. Now I'm just gonna warm it up and then we can plate it. Now you can serve the soup as is, you know, just with some crusty bread and it's absolutely gorgeous. But this was for a princess. So I like to take a little piece of apple and just grate that into the bottom of the dish. Just a little texture. And then I'd take some cream, some whipped cream, partly whipped cream, and add some Parmesan cheese into there. And then just fold this in. Then you can ladle the soup into the dish. When you're ladling, if you don't want it to spill everywhere, here's a little chef's trick. Scoop up the soup, lift it up once, and then into the bowl. Okay, lift up and drop. How cool is that? Up and drop. One more time. Lift it up, drop, and then into the bowl. And it doesn't go everywhere. The lightly whipped Parmesan cream in the center it just starts to froth as it melts into the soup and then just garnish it with a few chives on top. Parsnip and apple soup with a Parmesan chive foam, fit for a princess. I always made extra of this recipe because I loved it so much. And when the princess had finished lunch and gone out of the kitchen, that was when it was time for me to enjoy. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Whether you're making the soup for a fine dining dinner party when you're entertaining friends, or if it's just for the family, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy this soup and make it one of your favorites too. Thanks for watching. If you don't have Eating Roy Lee or The Royal Chef, I put the link in the description below. The recipe's in the book. I'd love you to make it home. Make it home. Make it yourself at home. <laughs> I've got soup in my mouth. <laughs> See you again soon.